Good morning. My name is Tom Blanks. I am a consultant paediatric anaesthetist working in Nottingham, and I've been given the opportunity by Narcotrend to talk to you today about choosing devices for paediatric praxis. First of all, some declarations. Although this talk is sponsored by Narcotrend, I have received no financial contribution towards it, and I have no financial or pecuniary interest in the company itself. When discussing which device to use for paediatric processed EEG monitoring, the first thing to talk about is whether or not paediatric brains are any different from adult brains. Unfortunately, both for, this, both for this talk and my career, the answer is yes. This study from Constant and Subordin in 2012 demonstrates in awake patients really nicely some of the EEG differences as you uh, grow from one month all the way to six, 12 years in adulthood. And I think you can appreciate from this slide that the one month EEG has got much less spikiness, that is to say vertical movement, which corresponds to amplitude and therefore power in the head. And there are also far fewer peaks and troughs over the course of a one second time interval. And that is to say, there's far fewer wavelengths or discrete wavelengths that a machine can recognize put under fast Fourier transformation and give us a reliable index value. And as you progress from one, three and six years, again, I think you can appreciate that the EEG becomes much more spiky. That is to say, there's much more power emerging in the head. And also there are far more of those discrete peaks and troughs per time interval. And therefore, a machine can put those under fast Fourier transformation and give us a reliable reading. I think this slide demonstrates really nicely how that some of the non-age adjusted algorithms have real trouble interpreting or giving us reliable findings in the one month and one year old head because we lack that resemblance or that consistency with the more sort of uh, adult and, and young or older child EEG appearances. And are those changes mirrored under anaesthesia? Well, again, fortunately, this talk, yes, they are. Um, this uh, study from Carl Nielsen demonstrates the uh, changes that undergo in a paediatric EEG uh, under anaesthesia. And if I can draw your attention to the three red circles that I've put on, the first one at the age of one month demonstrates really nicely the lack of activity in any of the recognizable sort of frequencies in the head. There's no alpha, beta or theta activity. There's mainly just slow oscillations, that is to say activity below your delta band. And it's not until about the age of five months that we start to see power emerging in the theta and alpha bands. And then finally, it's not until about the age of 11 months that we start to see that much more stereotypical EEG appearance under anaesthesia. That is to say some strong delta activity, strong alpha activity with some theta fill in and some beta activity sitting on top of it. If I can draw your attention to the B uh, infographic, this represents the same information, but in a longitudinal scale, you can really see how particularly between the ages of one to maybe seven, eight, nine months, there's really very little in the way of that stereotypical EEG appearance. And you can see why the non-age adjusted algorithms have trouble interpreting or giving us meaningful values given those changes. This is one of my patients, a neonatal patients that I've anaesthetized to have a line inserted. And this slide just demonstrates some of the sort of unusual changes that neonates undergo under anesthesia. This slide represents something called the spectral edge frequency, 95. And that's defined as the frequency below which 95% of your activity is taking place. And if I can draw your attention to the yellow circle, you can see that as anesthesia starts, the spectral edge frequency rises quite considerably before tailing off. And this is really consistent with neonatal anesthesia, but very paradoxical to adults where this doesn't occur. Similarly, this is the same child, but with a different uh, set of information displayed. I think, honestly, I hope you can make out that within the yellow circle that I've drawn, there's a thin yellow line, and that represents power in the head. And you can see here that as anesthesia starts, there's a significant increase in the power of this child's head before it tails off as we enter birth suppression. 
Again, this is paradoxical to adults, where the power decreases on induction of anesthesia. So given that infants and neo neonates have these kind of unusual changes, what do we need to draw meaningful conclusions in this cohort? Well, we need access to three key things, really. The first of which is the raw EEG, demonstrated on the right. The spectral edge frequency, 95 or 90, depending on which device you're using, again, demonstrated next to us. And finally, the density spectral array, or the DSA, and all those things are represented uh, on the right-hand side. So why is this a problem? Well, first of all, devices without age adjust adjustment can often give quite high readings that are inconsistent with anesthesia, and certainly out of keeping with the clinical sort of picture of the child. And secondly, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but the index value can often jump around a lot um, from switching from quite low to quite high readings without really any particular clinical change um, in the child under anesthesia. Secondly, there are some practical considerations. Um, the size of the stickers are often poorly designed for a child's head. And I, and I don't know if you have experienced that sometimes you really run out of real estate space trying to get these stickers on. Secondly, I find that the reliability of the stickers is often quite variable. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but I certainly find that uh, I have to go through a couple of stickers sometimes to make sure I get one that sits uh, uh, well on the child's head. And thirdly and finally, some of the paediatric uh, stickers are more expensive than their adult counterparts. And I think that's really important to take into account in the economy that we work in. So what are your options uh, for processed EEG monitoring in children in the UK? Well, fundamentally, you've got three choices. You've got, first of all, the Narcotrend. Second, the BIS monitor delivered by Medtronic. And thirdly, you finally, you have the set line by the Massimo route. The set line, and this is taken directly from their manual, says that the device is not intended for use in children less than 18 years of age. And indeed, this corresponds very well with the uh, set line sticker, which I have found is very hard to apply because it's really quite large. So that really functionally leaves you with two options, the BIS and the Narca trend. And I personally have chosen the Narca trend for the advantages that we'll come to talk on just shortly. The first advantage is a practical one. The electrodes are, have a relatively small footprint and you can move them around on the patient. You can move them from the forehead to the mastoid processes and you can move the reference electrode to really anywhere you like on the patient as long as it's over a bony surface. This frees up some of that valuable retail state space on the uh, child's forehead. You can also use subdermal electrodes, which I, doing a bit of neuro, find particularly useful. Its algorithm has a specific age adjustment and we'll come to talk about that in the next slide. Thirdly and finally, the presentation of the raw EEG, the density spectral array, and the spectral edge frequency, I find is very much best in its class. There's also, and I've left this off the slide, my apologies, um, the EEG or the electrodes are exactly the same for adults and paediatrics, so there's no additional expense for paediatric patients. So what does the Narcotrend algorithm do differently? Well, of course, they won't tell us exactly what it does differently. It's proprietary to them. Um, but under the age of 120 days, it presents to us an undifferentiated EEG. And it will flash up in the top right-hand corner. It will say undifferentiated EEG. However, if it recognizes birth suppression or an isoelectric EEG, it will let us know by giving us an index that corresponds to that deep level of anesthesia. Above 120 days, it will start to analyze for differentiated EEG waveforms, which are present in about 95% of kids at the age of four to five months. In summary, pediatric brains are different in both awake and under, sorry, when both awake or under anesthesia. The younger cohorts can be troublesome with non-age adjusted algorithms. And in my opinion, the Narcotrem provides the best in class practical and algorithmic advantages for processed EEG monitoring these patients. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.